Beloved people of God, we want to gladly say very happy Christmas to you. And this is a period of special message. Let's bow our heads as we pray for this Christmas meditation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your only Son, Jesus Christ. As we celebrate, may we celebrate in the right way and in righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For this Christmas season, we want to read the scripture to reflect what we are really celebrating. I want to read from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I read from verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to, by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man who was of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. That is the message that the angel gave to Mary. Let's go to verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country in haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary that the babe lived in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. This period we are celebrating something very wonderful. A global event, the birth of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. And let me start by telling us what Christmas simply means. Christmas is a combination of two words, two important words, Christ, and mass. That's the two words that are joined together. Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah, the chosen one of God, the savior of the world. Mass means either thanksgiving or celebration. So if you put the two words together, Christmas simply means the celebration of the savior, the birth of a savior, the celebration of deliverance from sin, Celebration from, you know, deliverance God has given us through Jesus. Or thanksgiving because a Savior was born. And that is what we celebrate. Where we read, the angel gave Mary the message of Christmas. And I want to pick two, three things we should know about Christmas. Why we celebrate. It's unfortunate that even Christians and church members has secularized Christmas. Let me call our attention again. Number one thing you should know about Christmas is Christmas is purely a spiritual matter. It's not a social event. If you look at the time when the angel went and announced to Mary, everything was spiritual. The language was spiritual. Blessed are you, highly favored of the Lord. Because we are going to give birth to a son, we shall call his name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. Again, I want to reiterate here that Christmas is not for Christians. Jesus did not die or did not come for Christians. Jesus came for the whole world and the whole humanity. That's why we read in the scripture in John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world, not Christians, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, look at the comprehensive nature of salvation in Christ, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So Christmas is a spiritual celebration. Christmas is all about worship. Unfortunately, many people who travel far and near to go home for Christmas never participate in any spiritual activity. That is an error. That is an aberration. That is a contradiction. So as you celebrate Christmas, take note of the following. Number one, Christmas is a spiritual event, celebration of our salvation. Number two, 
Christmas is all about worship, and this worship, according to John 4 24, must be in spirit and in truth. It must be a worship devoid of sin, devoid of worldliness, devoid of idolatry. Today, a lot of idolatrous stays are clamped together in Christmas. Again, Christmas is a time of special favor, both from God and from men. And finally, Christmas is meant to be a blessing, not a curse. So whatever you do at Christmas, you reflect on these things. Highly faithful one. That's the message. Blessed one. And I want to tell you something. If you want to know what it means to be blessed, you read Psalm 1, 1 to end. He said that blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of God. So if you are celebrating Christmas in ungodliness, unrighteousness, in immorality, idolatry, syncretism, neo-paganism, killing, kidnapping, criminality, these things have no business with Christmas. You cannot receive the blessing of Christmas. So if you want to receive the blessing of Christmas, you must celebrate in righteousness. You must celebrate in the fear of God. You must be spiritual in that celebration. Nothing should put you under pressure materially during Christmas. People are under pressure unnecessarily. I've not bought this, I've not bought that, I've not built my house, I've not completed my house, I didn't buy a car. Let me tell you, none of these things have any direct link to Christmas. Christmas is a spiritual celebration that my saints and your saints have been forgiven. Christmas is a time of sharing the good news. It's also a sharing what you have with other people. I tell people who, when you say sharing, people say, oh, if I have, I will share. Everybody has something to share with others at Christmas. If you don't have money to share or material things to share, you have love to share, godly love. You have visit, encouragement to share. You have, you know, fellowship to share. So you must share something. There are prisoners to be visited. There are the, the, the widows. There are the indigent. You can visit somebody, the elderly that are lonely. Some people who marry, they didn't have a child. At Christmas, they are feeling lonely. If I had children, my children would have come home. You visit them. You are sharing with them. So I encourage you. Celebrate Christmas in righteousness. And the blessings of Christmas will be yours. And I want you to don't celebrate Christmas like Herod. You know, when they told Herod that a, a king is born, you know what happened? The Bible said Herod was troubled because he didn't want any other person to rise. He was the only cock that should be crowing. Some of us have that very selfish, self-centered spirit and mindset. No, Christmas is Libra law and wishing others well and making others happy. Again, the next thing Christmas that Herod celebrated was wrong. He told the shepherd, the wise man, he said, when you see where the king is born, bring word to me so that I can go and worship him also. But do you know what Herod was thinking? To go and kill the child. Some of us are killers at Christmas. Some of us are destroyers at Christmas. Destroying one another, destroying of people's opportunities, assassinating character of people. I want to employ you. As I wish you blessed, glorious Christmas, I want you to celebrate in the right direction. The God who brought the message of blessedness and favor to Mary is still there to bless you. And I want to pray for you. Wherever you celebrate Christmas, I bless your life. I pray that this God that gave us salvation in Christ at Christmas will give you salvation in your soul. The Lord will cause you to be faithful. The Lord will give you blessings that even the world cannot take away from you. You shall know peace. You shall know joy. You shall have greatness in your life. May the God of heaven make you to celebrate Christmas in righteousness, in holiness, and in the fear of God. This is my prayer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Happy Christmas to you once again. Amen.